I want to speak shortly or briefly uh, as the Lord is going to help. And I'm, I want to take your mind back to the, to the Easter period because I'm reading from Matthew 28, verse 1 to 10. I'm taking you back to the Easter weekend and I'm taking you back to Matthew 28, verse 1 to 10, and I'm going to read. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb rolled back the stone and sat on it. I like that part of sitting on it. His appearance or his countenance, his appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. And the angel said to the woman, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly, in other words, come and see, and after you have seen, go, go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them, greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now many times when I read at this passage, and I get to verse number 10, I ask myself a few questions concerning what was going on in the mind of these women. They were there when the stone was rolled, and the stone was not a small stone that two ladies could come and roll it back. It was heavy. But in the morning, they wake up, they prepare themselves, because inside them there was faith, and yet inside them there was an obstacle. And it is just that we wake up in the morning, and we are ready. We know God is going to do it, but we also see there is an obstacle. It's like we, we have faith, and we are afraid at the same time. But these ladies went anyway. They were going to anoint two places, the feet and the head of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as they had this faith, when they got there, the stone is rolled and the angel is speaking to them. And as they leave, the Bible tells us they are leaving, they are afraid and yet with joy. Remember, they came in faith and with doubt. But as they leave, they are living fearful and with joy. Fearful because they don't know whether Jesus has been stolen. With joy because they still remember what he had told them before he died. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But today I want you to understand clearly that God is perfect in how he does things. And therefore, we must take note of what God shows us on his first resurrection morning, because he means everything. And there are lessons here in this text that are very rich. If we can capture the lessons here, then we can experience what some call a parallel resurrection. That parallel uh, uh, resurrection experience can come upon us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And as I put it to you today, that the stone that was rolled back or removed from the entrance of the tomb had to be removed. Jesus said he had to come back. And for him to come forth and people to see it, the stone had to be rolled back. It is not like the testimony that some people give. It is not experiential, but they are giving it because other people talk about it. You see, when I was in high school, because I met uh, people giving testimonies out there, how God has saved from different kind of sins and so on, I would repeat the same. But I had not that experience. So sometimes you can say things, but you have not that experience in you. But the stone had to be rolled back so that people can witness, people can know for sure 
that the Lord has been resurrected. And what I have called my sharing is that, that it is time to remove the stone. It is time to remove the stone. Because no longer under the stone of law, the stone has been rolled back, and therefore there is a free flow of the grace of God that has to flow because the stone that had held the flow of the grace of God has been removed. And I'll be looking at three things about the stone, of the removing of the stone, and I'll be done. And I'm calling the first one empty spaces. Empty spaces. You and I know that there is something different about how a man sees the thing and how a woman sees the thing. And if you don't know, I don't know what you're waiting for. Because we don't see things the same way. Men know black and white. But we have a problem with the colors. Not because we never went to school, but because we don't put on a lot of colors. We either put black or blue. We, 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 we put one, you know? If, if, I, if I ask a man, if I ask Alice to stand up and I ask a man, and I'm not going to ask any man, what, she's, what is she wearing on top? Some of us will have very strange statements that we are going to make because we are men. Anything that is not red and not yellow should be orange. Period. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's a good man. <laughs> so women see things differently than men. If there is something that uh, men actually, uh, I, I, will not get, I will not say get an offense, but it is the way you women can repeat the same thing five times in, as you communicate. Five times. And the man had it the first time. Yani nasema. It is like this. Sasa, but it's the same story. But you know, when we meet with Kebera, it's easy. Kebera, we are going to Nakuru, period. And you know, we are different. Now turn to the person next to you, if she's a lady, tell her we are different. Actually, we even think differently. And if you are married to a woman that thinks like you, there is something wrong and you're going to fight. Also, if a man is the one that is so detailed, that family has a challenge. But a woman will be detailed. When we see a house, men, when we see a house and we want to buy, it's good, let's buy it. But a woman will ask, where is it? How much? Who is the owner? When can we move? You know, and all those are other details. What we want is, I remember taking my children and, uh, and I was telling them, I wanted to show them uh, where we were going to build in Kawasukari. And so we, I'm excited, and Alice is also excited. But the guys are not excited, actually, because the Kawasukari was bushy. So we, we land in a bushy place, me and Alice. And my son is asking, Sasa, ini nini? Ate what is this? You know, if we went to a chip's place, that would be something else. So women see things differently. And I have, I have a feeling, therefore, it was important for the women to go to the great fast. And I will tell you why. Because women are detailed. They, they want to give all the details that there is there. And I think as they give the story, Matthew is able to pick it as it is happening. And I know we say women don't do much, of course, 
But there are some that don't talk. So don't group every, every woman a talkative. Some don't. Some observe. But me, I would rather somebody who talks. You le haongeagi. Ujui, siku ataongea na weza ngonga mtu na nyundo. Kwa hivyo ya fadhali ya kiongea ukiwa kutu tayari ukiwa. Hata weza ngonga mtu na nyundo. Ha? Sindiyo? Hata wale mabwana wanakaga kiimi ya si wazuri. Ya fadhali unaongea. Talk! Sema kitu. Hata kama, <clears throat> sema. <laughs> now, can you imagine if Thomas was the first one to get there? Now, let's just imagine Thomas was the first one to get to the tomb. And he sees an empty tomb, so what does he do? He goes, but he's telling people, I did not go into the details. I'm not so sure. That is Thomas. How about Matthew? If Matthew went... Matthew would have looked and started saying, now I have a problem. How am I going to explain taxes? This man used to pay tax. What, what will I tell Rome? I'll tell them I'm a Jeficha so that they can still be waiting for the taxes that are going to come from him. You see, if it was Peter, and Peter is, is a hot-tempered person, and... Uh, he, he goes to Yes, sir. If Peter goes to the tomb and Peter nae ni kiberebere, he would have come back and said, yes, I saw the angel. He spoke to me. But I did not have time to go inside to check because Men, see, I told you men don't, are not for details. Akiambiwa ni kutoka. Tosa akienda di wanaanza kuuliza. When we got our first child, she was a girl. And you know, she's a girl. Right? Ama mjui? She's a girl. But anyway, I was in the hospital, the baby was born, and I was told by the nurses, it's a girl. But I was not interested with a girl myself or a boy myself. I wanted to know how is she. Then I was told she's okay. We had agreed that I should go to Sunus. For those older guys, you know Sunus. The nappies, hili ya kuosha. Kwa sababu hizi za kutupa ziku ya po. Hizi ya ziku ya zimeko. Ama kama zirikuwa kwa zirikuwa za wadosi sana. Go to Sunus. So I learned at uh, Nation Roundabout from Aga Khan, and I, I'm, I want to cross over and go to, to Sunus. It is on Biashara Street. It was. I don't know whether it is still there. Oh, it is still there? Thank God. It's over 20 something years since I went there. So. so I met a brother, and he's so excited, he's asking me, Who has come? Who has come? And then I look at this guy and I can't remember whether it was a boy or a girl. So I tell him, it's either a boy or a girl. But it is true, isn't it? It's either a boy or a girl. And then this guy looks at me and says, if it is a girl, you'll have got to look for a boy. And I'm wondering, Kwani a girl and a boy, what's the difference? Now the point that I'm bringing is that women are of details. And every time I'm told by a woman that she has a baby, I forget the gender. And I'm asked by Alice, ni kai ika, ni kai retu. No, ni muana. <laughs> so men, we think differently. It's a child, is a child, we bless the name of the Lord. But girl, ladies are the ladies of details. And it is good to be of details also. So you can understand probably why God ordained that woman will be the first in the tomb. A woman, the more delicate vessel, is prone to bring more motherly and caring. After all, they had come to the tomb carrying spices to anoint the remains of Jesus. They were ready to anoint the remains of Jesus. And I want you to hear, they had come to anoint what remained. Remember they were told he will arise. But this morning, though they had some faith that their stone would be rolled, but they were going to anoint the remains. 
They had come to anoint the remain church. This is a serious issue in the local church. Today there are many who desire to anoint the dead things. Things that are dead. Rather than see that it is no longer there, these ladies wanted to anoint the dead. It's only when they realize that it is no longer there, that it has been removed, that they could embrace the new thing. And I'm speaking to you, brother and sisters, that let's not waste our time. Because Jesus is alive, even the dead things of our life, if a stone is rolled, let's not carry anointing spices to go anoint the dead things. They are dead. They are dead. They are dead. They are dead. So the women, not only were they going into the tomb, but they were going to anoint the head and the feet of Jesus. They were going to take care to address the wounds of his body. This woman was ready. They knew what they saw on a Friday. They are going now to anoint the wounds, the bruises of the Savior. They are going to anoint him. They knew he could be stinking at that time. So that's another thing. There are far more two people dressing and nursing old wounds than seeing that the tomb is empty. You know, oh, if I was not, oh, this happened. You know, we go back to those long time ago. You know, if I never got an A in mathematics, it is done. Can you imagine today still talking about Machaco's technical? At the O. You know, because if I went to Machaco's technical today, first of all, my principal died and buried. My English teacher died and is buried. The youngest teacher that was teaching us, I don't know where Mutiso is today. That was the youngest. He had just left university. The others were old guys. My deputy from Muranga went and died. Now, I cannot go back and bring them back to come and teach me. I did my best and life goes on. I'm a kizungu yangu nimbaya. Sinipale tu accent ina nisumbuaga. And for accent I can go to the English teachers that are here to help me. Now some of us waste a lot of time in going back. Oh if I had this, if I had that, if I, if I, if I could have been born to this family I would be different. So we mourn, we stay there. So there are so many people that are dressing wounds and nursing wounds rather than seeing the tomb is empty. It is empty. I'm no longer there. I'm alive. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The stone has been rolled. My stone has been rolled. It is time to remove the stone. And once the stone is removed, we go living. Why women? There are more details. They have spent the night preparing the spices to present a new aroma to the dead body of Jesus. They want to make the dead thing smell sweet. Let's not waste our time. Because if it is dead, even if you are anointed, we are not going to change it. It's still going to, to stink and decay. They were going to do it. And yet they wasted a lot of time as they prepared themselves. They wanted to make the dead thing smell sweet. Can I tell you, church, this? That the dead thing, those things in your past, those things that ought to be in your past, will never smell sweet. You know it is like when you're dirty. Ata ukijipiga ondorono. Somebody can smell ondorono, irio na jasho chafu. You know there are some of us that think you can just wake up and just... Pew, pew, pew. There are some that will still ask, Ako kamunuko? Ako kamunuko? Because ni lazima. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's the same thing you cannot. We, we are not going to, 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 to put spices on the dead. We're going to leave them because they will never, never smell good. In John 24 and 7, the Bible says, So they ran both together. And the other disciples did outrun Peter. And came fast to the spulcher. And he stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying. Yet went he not. 
Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the spouch and seeing the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. There was an empty tomb. No longer was death in that tomb. No. The stone had been removed, revealing that the tomb was empty. Now this is what I want you to know. The linen represents the last thing that man had placed on him. He left it. I hope you can get this. Because now this is what excited me about this. The linen representing the last thing that man had placed on Jesus, he left it behind. And I need someone here today. Whatever the last thing that has been placed on you, do not keep it on you any longer. Leave it behind. Fold it up and pack it away for good. People would have placed something on you that you will never become this, never become that. Fold it. Wrap it up. Put it at a corner. Don't go back for it. You know, people can do many things to you. Allow the new you, emerging you, the person that has metamorphosis, that transformed you. You have no need for what they placed on your old you. I am new. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I am alive because Jesus is the life. You must leave behind the last thing man placed on you. Because God will dress you in something. Never won before. And that's what Jesus comes up with. Something out of this world. May the Lord do so to someone in this service this morning. Whatever they laid on you, wrap it up. Put it at a corner. What they placed on you was for your burial. Oh man, now that you are alive, wrap it up. Wrap it up. I hear the song, is a new season, is a new day. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. The other word that I talked about, an empty space, the second one is emergency. Time is of essence. Listen, when God brings about a mighty change, a new beginning, what you do next is of crucial essence. There is no time to stand around and wonder what happened. No time to decide if you like the empty tomb. No time to investigate the clothes. You know, if the Lord has set you free, you are free. Don't go to try to negotiate. If you are alive, leave it. Wrap it up. Leave it as I said. You know, ati nataka kurudi pale nilikuwa nikikunywa changaa ndugu kama umeokoka hiyo mahali wachana nayo. Ati unajua nasikia ka feeling nataka tu kwenda nikae vile nilikuwa nikikaa nishike glass vile nilikuwa nishika na nionje vile nilikuwa bwana. Si unajiruk <laughs> If the Lord has set you free you have become free indeed. And that's what this one simply means. There is no time to stand around and wonder what happened. If the stone has been rolled, get going. It's your time for freedom. Don't sit around. The devil would like to put the snare back on you. No time to decide if you like the empty tomb. No time to investigate the clothes. And this is the message that I want you to go out and tell others. Actually, what Jesus was telling them, now that I am out of here, go, go, go tell others about me. Matthew 28, 5 to 6, which we read says, And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here for his reason, as he said. Come see the place where they laid him. In other words, he's trying to tell them, now go. There is a new phrase that I want you to pick here. Check it out, then chat it out. Check it out, and then go chat it out. You check it, and you go speak about it. I am free. Speak about your freedom. I am healed. Speak about your healing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. See it, then go chat it out. Check it out, then chat it out. In other words, once you are a witness to the fact that the old things are passed away, once Jesus has risen, once the tomb is empty, once God does something new in your life, then talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about Jesus and his saving grace. Go testify to others about what God has done. And this is not time to be silent. He has healed me. 
I am free. Go tell others about the freedom. Matthew 28, 7. Go quickly and tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goes before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. I, lo, I have told you. The key phrase is here, go quickly, just go. The tomb is empty, just go. You have wrapped up the things that put on you, just go. Go tell others about Jesus. Don't park at the place of your pain. Don't park there, don't stay there, don't stay there. Rise up, wash yourself, do like David. Go and eat and enjoy because the child that you're praying for is already gone. Don't park there. Go. Jesus is no longer in the grave. He's risen. And Jesus is making his way to Galilee. Leave the grave alone. Conversation is over. It is done. Move ahead. The stone is gone. The blockage has been removed. It is emergency. Amen. The tomb is empty. It's an emergency. Now run. Go quickly. It's an emergency. emergency. <laughs> Strike when the iron is hot. If some of you, if, if some of you struck while the iron is hot or moved and did what God told you while feeling his presence, you could be in a different place. You know, you felt it and you ran. But some of us, you feel it, then you want to ask a few people. Oh, now, Naji. Oh, Nafkriaji. Naskia kama kuokoka, unaonaje? Because actually when you start telling people at unaskia, they will tell you a few things. Where? Where is your koka? Because they are the judges. Ni unasikia, unainuka, unakimbia. Eh, unatoka mbio. Don't ask for opinion. But sadly, too many of us, the fire of the Holy Ghost comes and we feel it is the Spirit of God, but we sit down and we wait for, we behave like Gideon. God, if it is you, nitatoka inje, nitaweka tena, jaribu tu, maji izunguke, ii kue dry. You know, we waste a lot of time trying to get this and the other. But when the spirit of the Lord is moving, when the pool of Bethesda has been stirred up, that's the time for your miracle. That's the time for my miracle. Hallelujah. Matthew 28, 8, and they departed quickly from the spatula with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples' word. Why do they have to tell the disciples? Well, that, that's about it. They are living in a very society that even the women to tell the men that he is alive, the men have to come to see for themselves. They will not believe it. So it was important. So while the disciples would easily believe, the message had to go to them also to go and witness. See what God has done church the message that these women were carrying this message that were to deliver to the disciples it wasn't a message merely for the current followers of Jesus Christ no this message was also for us it is going beyond them so that we go tell others that Jesus is alive he is alive he is no longer in the grave Matthew 28, 9 and as they went to his disciples behold Jesus met him saying oh hail and they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. They met with Jesus and he tells them, Oh, hell! This word hell comes from the word Cairo and it means rejoice exceedingly. Be glad. So Jesus is telling Mary, be glad. Magdalene, be glad. I think he's speaking to Jimmy today. Jimmy, be glad. Hell. Why? Because Jesus is alive. He is alive. In other words, Jesus has the first Easter parade. This is a time of celebration. He's not pushing up the uh, diocese. No. The Rose of Sharon, who is alive and well. Oh, hell, let's praise him. He's telling them, let's praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We can praise him. The tomb is empty. The stone has been rolled. It is time to remove it. If there is a little stone, push it out. Pull it away. No weeping, no mourning. The stone has passed. You can rejoice now, he tells them. Oh hell, you can celebrate. You can now be relieved of your past. Welcome to a new day, he tells them. Hail, King Jesus. Hail, King Jesus. And they fell to his feet and worshipped him. 
So let's get this. They fell to where the nail was. Yes, right, they fell there. They fell to the place where death sentence had been carried out. Yes, because of the law. Don't miss it. Jesus had been ultimately accused of breaking the law. Which one? The law, Exodus 23, thou shalt have no other God before me. In, in, in that, he was committing an act of blasphemy, so they crucified him. But here they are bowing down. The law that killed him, the law had no power to retain him. The law could kill him, but the law could not retain him. You see, it is important for us to know that yes, the devil can be allowed to do certain things, but he is not allowed to destroy me. He cannot destroy me. He has no power. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus escaped and we can escape the snares of the devil. Number three, escape the setbacks. Jesus escaped that which was in the past. They worshipped his feet. And that which had tied his feet. The consequence of the law was no longer there. He was no longer nailed to the cross. He was no longer convicted by the law. No, the nail was removed. All that remained was the scar of what used to be. The word is what used to be. The stone was removed. And the nail is gone. The only thing that we can see is only the scar. And we can witness and say, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. The setback. Please note that the disciples have quickly gone back to where they were when Jesus found them. Remember, I hope you get this. What Jesus is telling them, go back to Galilee. And that is where he met them. When he was telling them to follow me, I'll make you a fishers of men. He met them in Galilee. They were fishers. They were fishing. And so he tells them to go back. And sometimes when I read the scripture, sometimes I wonder, what, what's all this? Because when they go back, Peter does not only go back to Galilee, he goes back fishing and Jesus has to meet him fishing. But what Jesus meant when he says go back to your familiar places, there must be something that Jesus wanted them to, to know. Please know the disciples have quickly gone back to where they were when Jesus found them. They went back to the safe place. They went back to the familiar places. They went back to Galilee. They went back to Galilee. And you know, the wrong move they did was to go back and do the things that they were doing before. Because going back to Galilee, they were going to wait for him. But when they went back to Galilee, they went to do the things that they used to do before. Jesus is alive, the tomb is empty, the stone has been rolled. Don't go back again to do the things that you used to do. But wait in Galilee because of the promise of the Father. Yes, go back to Galilee. You see, Galilee itself meant a circuit. In other words, they have gone to a familiar circle or circuit. They are prone to repeating their past. In other words, when they went back, it became easy for them to repeat their past. Jesus tells these women, go and tell these disciples that when they try to go back to Galilee, I'll be right there. I will remind them of where they used to be and I will remind them of what I have said and I would make them to be. Yes, I understand. Jesus is telling them. I understand there is a rough season. They have just lost me. But I want them to go back there because I want to reveal myself to them in the situation and circumstance that they were in before. Church, it is time to go and fish but this time, fish men. No wonder they went back fishing and Jesus meets Peter. And he's telling Peter, do you love me? I think it is crucial for us. Jesus is alive. Oh God, may he reveal himself to you so that he can have commu communication with you. So that he can tell you like he told Peter, do you love me more than this? If you love me more than this, then feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Go out and do fishing, but not the fishing that you used to fish. Go out and fish men. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, the stone is removed. We are no longer under the law. 
And Heavenly Father, we have gone back to what we used to do because it is comfortable. And it is in that situation you are telling us to come out and continue fishing men, fishing men, winning souls for the kingdom. Heavenly Father, I pray that, dear Lord, because of the Easter message, because of what happened on Calvary, because Jesus is alive, we too are going to alive to be alive and we're going to pursue our purposes in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to bless your people and bless their weak that they will be fishers of men in Jesus' name. Amen. The good Lord bless you, keep you, and sustain you.